Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we give you the highest praise, Lord, because you are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. God, there is nobody like you, God. No, not one in all the heavens or in all the earth. So, God, we give you the highest praise. You and you alone, oh God, are worthy to be praised. And God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your love and kindness, God. Thank you for being good to us, oh God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. Thank you for starting us on our way. God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We give you all the glory, God, because you are worthy. God, it's in you that we live and that we move and that we have our very being, God. So we can't thank you enough, God. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God, there is nobody like you in all the earth, God. We thank you, Lord, and we love you today, God. And God, we just ask you right now, Lord, as you look upon us, God, and search our hearts, oh God, we ask you, God, to forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for every thought, Lord. Forgive us for every action, Lord. Forgive us for everything we pondered in our hearts, oh God, that displeased you, God. We ask you to forgive us right now, Lord. Clean us up, God. Make us vessels of honor before you on this morning. God, we ask you right now, Lord, to even show us, God, the errors of our ways, oh God. So, God, that we can come before you, God, with hearts that are repentant, oh God. With minds that are made up, God, to do what pleases you. So, we thank you right now, God, for all forgiveness. God, but we know you promised us in your word, God, that if we come to you and we ask you for forgiveness, God, that you are faithful and that you are just, you will forgive us for our sins and you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you for forgiving us, God. Thank you, Lord, for accepting our praise on this morning, oh God. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, for you alone, oh God, can forgive sin, oh God. So we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for making us vessels of honor. And Lord, as you look upon us this morning, God, we ask you to look upon those who may be sick in their bodies, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to provide that healing, oh God, that only you can provide, God. We thank you in advance, oh God, for your touch of healing, oh God, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, touch Deacon Thomas especially on this morning, Lord. Touch his body, oh God. Lord, call for it to work, oh God, as you have commanded it to do so, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just ask you right now, Lord, to look upon the, the light in the family this morning, oh God. Look upon, Lord, the family of, of the Wilmingtons, oh God. Lord, we just pray right now that you comfort them in this hour, oh God. Lord, allow them, Lord, to feel your, your presence, oh God. Allow them to know, oh God, that they are wrapped, oh God, in the, in the wings, oh God, of your love, oh God. Lord, comfort their hearts, oh God. Allow them to be strengthened at this time, oh God, of their breathing. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, for taking them through this dark hour. Lord, we know that you are able, oh God. We know that you stand ready and willing, oh God. So we just thank you in advance, oh God, for the wonderful things, oh God, that you're ready and willing and able to do in their lives, oh God. And Father, we just ask you now, God, as we go forward in this service on today, God, anoint the speaker, oh God, anoint every song that is sang, oh God, every prayer that is prayed, oh God. You have your way, God, in the midst of your people on today, Lord. You speak to our hearts and minds, oh God. Lord, you provide, oh God, every need, oh God. Lord, you speak a word to every situation, oh God. Lord, let your word come forth today, God, and not return unto you void, oh God. But let it accomplish, Lord, the very things that you are sending it to accomplish in the earth today. Father, we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to feel your presence here today, God. Thank you, God, for that reassurance, oh God, that you are our God and we are your people. Thank you, God, for looking upon us, God, for every need that we have, oh God. So we just thank you, God, for being God. Thank you, God, for loving us, God. Thank you, God, for attending to our every need, oh God. We say thank you, thank you, thank you. And God, we don't take it for granted, God, but we thank you, God, for allowing us to come yet again to join ourselves together in this your house, oh God. Oh God, you have your way, oh God. You have your way in the midst of your people on today, God. For you know the needs, God. You know the thoughts, God. You know every desire of every heart, God. So we just put it in your hands right now, oh God. We turn everything over to you right now, God. And we lift up holy hands, oh God. And we praise you and we bless you, God. For you say you inhabit our praises, God. So we set up a habitation for you on this day, oh God. We praise you, God, knowing that, oh God, that if we lift you up and that you break, we praise you, God, that you will take care of all the needs. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we give you all the glory and all the thanks on this morning. 
Good morning. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say unto you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. I read for you. John, the sixth chapter, the 32nd verse through the 35th verse. The Lord of blessed readers, hears and doers of his word. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only fallible written word of God. We affirm our faith in God. We believe that there's um, only one God eternally existed in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We affirm our faith in repentance. We believe that the only means of, um, means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in salvation. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body in answer to believe in prayer. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit according to Acts 2 and 4 is given to believers who ask for it. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and separate life in the present world. Amen. Amen.
Beverly Street, they have for Iowa. Our service are Sunday from 11.30. We have Tuesday night service online at 7 o'clock and Friday night service at 7 o'clock. So be a part of our services. You can find all that information on our website. But this time, we're getting ready to have some church. Amen? I said we're getting ready to have church. So this time, we're talking about praise team. We're talking to lift us up high. Let's say amen.
We know that he left this earthly place. We pray that God's walking with him. Jesus is going to be walking in his bosom. Amen? Amen. But for the family, we're going to be out here to support you. Tuesday morning, this Tuesday, October the 18th, here at Mount Owl. I believe it's the hour of 10 o'clock. For those who can, come out and support the family. Amen? So they can say their final goodbyes and find closure. We never, we never know when it could be us that will need support. So let's go out and support those who, are, who will be needing support this next few days. Amen? Amen? Any other announcements? If not, we're going to get right back into our services. We know we have a word of God coming this morning. We're going to pass it for you for the word. And maybe by the time that uh, the choir gets done with the selection, we can have Elder Broyles to present the speaker of the hour. But at this time, we're going to call for the choir for another selection. Let's say amen. Amen.
people. He loves his wife and his family. So we ask you to give him your undivided attention this morning, this afternoon. As I present him to you this morning, I'll ask you to please rest your feet and receive the pastor of this great church, Ellen. Cornelius E. Boone, the pastor of the Mount Island Church of God in Christ, with a hearty amen. amen. One more time, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're so worthy this morning. You're worthy, dear God. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for your anointing in this place. And God, we come to that hour where man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out your mouth, dear God. This morning, God, we trust and believe that you have given your servant a right now word, a word for this season, dear God. God, and we said thank you. Thank you for your people, God. Thank you, dear God, for those, dear God, are requesting prayer, dear God. Those that are standing in line, dear God, for a healing touch, dear God. Your words say, God, all things are possible to them that believe it, dear God. We believe in this morning, dear God, that those that are standing in line for healing, dear God, that they will receive their healing, dear God. Oh, dear God, those that are standing in line this morning, dear God, for peace, dear God, you'll give them that peace that pass it all understanding, God. And God, those that need to be comfort this morning, God, you're a comfort, dear God. You see the lightning family, dear God. You see the Wilmington family, dear God. You see others who loved one, dear God, have transitioned into eternity, dear God. You see them, God. And then, God, we lift them before you, asking you, God, to comfort. Asking you, God, to be with them, dear God. And God, we said thank you. Now, God, I ask you, to let me decrease and that Jesus you will increase and that we your people will see you in your son Jesus name we pray amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord amen truly this morning I believe Many of us who have come this morning, we have that testimony as the psalmist said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was listening to my dear sister sung, how good God has been to us. Amen. And God truly has been good to us. It wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up this morning. Amen. It wasn't even, amen, if you have a spouse and that spouse shook you or that spouse said it was time to get up. It wasn't that person that woke you up. But it was God's mercy, God's love that allowed you and I to get up this morning and to come to his house. And because we are here, I'm trusting and believing God to meet every need that's in the house. See, it's time out for you and I just coming to the house of the Lord just because we feel it's the right thing to do. But when we come to the house of the Lord, we need to come expecting 
something from God. Expecting God, amen, if he don't move in your life, to move into somebody else's life. To save someone, to deliver someone, to heal someone, to encourage someone. Time out for us just coming, amen, just to come. I remember to hear an old saint said, when the praises of the Lord go up, his blessing can come down. Saints, we need God's blessing in this day and hour. We need to feel God's presence and God's anointing. If we be honest, many of us are going through things. And God is the only answer. There is no other answer. That's why he sent his son, Jesus. Jesus. And there's something about that name, Jesus. Something about that name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Something about that name. You call on Jesus. Your situation. Hallelujah. What change? And what do I mean? That doesn't mean that everything is going to be all right. But even in the midst of the storm, amen, God will change you and I so we can go through it, amen, where we can have the victory. The situation may never change, but God will change us in this situation where we'll be able to go through it. We won't complain, amen, but we'll give him thanks, knowing that it's all working for our good. Amen. I'm just trying to encourage someone this morning as I encourage myself. Amen, because we are going through so much in this day and hour. And it's not time for you and I to quit. But it's time for us to ensure that our soul is anchored in Jesus. Because storms and wind are going to blow. But if our soul is anchored in Christ, we're going to have the victory. I truly thank God this morning for being saved and filled with his Holy Spirit. I thank God, amen, for each and every one of you, those online, those that are here, those that may not have been able to be in the house this morning for some other reason. We thank God for you. And if you saints don't mind, if you would go ahead on and turn your Bibles to Isaiah, not Isaiah, my bad, Nehemiah, the fourth chapter, verses seven through nine, verses 13 through 17. Saints, we are living in perilous time. We are surrounded by so much ungodliness. Do you know many are trying to silence the saints of God from speaking, from sharing, and living a life of holiness. God word command us in 2022 and beyond 
still to be ye holy, for I am holy. In Isaiah, the eager eye prophet looked through time and said, In a highway shall be there, in a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean should not pass over it, but it should be for those, the wayfaring men. The fool should not err therein. But love, when we look at holiness and sanctification today, it will make us really question some of the old teachings, some of the things in the word of God when we look at this word holiness and sanctification. And those who declare that they are holy and sanctified and set aside for God's use. Because we are seeing so many are compromising with the word system. We have compromised so much with the word system that the church has lost some of its importance in society. We have compromised with this word system that the church has lost some of its importance in our society. But I'm reminded what Christ told Peter. He told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Even though it seemed like the church has lost its importance in society. We must understand God's church hasn't lost its importance. But man's church, amen, and you're going to find out when I said man's church, not the church that Jesus Christ died for, has lost its importance. Amen. But this church, amen, that God allowed men and women to be a part of is losing some of its relevancy in this day and hour. And I know many of you Bible scholars are going to tell me, say, but Pastor Matthew 24 speaks of these things. And you're so true. Matthew 24 speaks of these things and tells us, amen, that this is just the beginning of sorrow. And the end is not yet. Amen. But, as I was saying this morning, amen, how the church, amen, because of men, not God's church, but the church that men, amen, is trying to present to the world. They are causing the church that Jesus died for to lose some of its importance in society. And this morning, I'm going to have Evangelist Boone read those scriptures in Nehemiah. As we pump in our heart what is pastor talking about today? Because our church seemed not to be as important as it once was. Evangelist Boone, if you would read Nehemiah for me. The whole yeah. chapter, verses 7 through 9 and 13 through 17. Verse 7. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and Arabians and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem 
were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wrong and conspired all of them to come together and inspired and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Verse 13. Therefore I sat in the lower places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the herbergiums. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the readers and hearers and the doers of his word. And as I was sharing with you earlier, amen, we see many things in Matthew 24 being fulfilled. And while these things are being fulfilled, many of us are experiencing these things. Amen. But the thing about it, Christ told us in his word that these things would take place before he returned for his bride. He told us how iniquity should abound, how iniquity to increase because of the love of many shall wax cold. But love, my question today, since we are experiencing many of these things in Matthew 24, what do God want us, his children, saints, born again believers, to do in these perilous times where the church seemed to have lost some of its importance in society? Well, when we look at Nehemiah, I believe we can learn much from Nehemiah. Because our thought today will come from verse 16. And Evangelist Boone read this. And it came to pass from that time forward that half of my servants wrote in the work. And the other half of them held both the spear, the shield, the bow, and the habergenson. And the ruler were behind all the house of the Lord. Our thought for today, work and be prepared to fight. Work and be prepared to fight. This morning I want to take a few minutes to examine God's servant Nehemiah and what he did when the temple of God, the wall in the holy city Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians. God people had turned from serving him to serving other gods. We serve God by being obedient to his word, to his commandment, his law, and his statutes. Notice what I say, amen, how we serve God, amen. Because we're living in a day and hour, amen, where men don't believe this, amen. But we serve God by being obedient to what is written.
We serve God by his command, what is written in his commandments, what his laws say, and what his statutes. God used the Babylonians to enslave them for 70 years. And these were his chosen people. And as they began, and as God allowed them to begin to return to the holy city of Jerusalem, they found it in ruins. This reminds me of today, where men want to live according to their laws, according to their statutes. But God has a way of getting our attention. Just how he got their attention, amen. God has a way of getting our attention. God is still saying holiness is right in 2022, amen, and beyond. But we have a world and a society that want to silence the church. A world that don't want you and I to say what is written, amen. A world that wants to do things according to their way. But I'm reminded in scripture, God said his eyes are everywhere, beholding the good in the evil. And I opened up by sharing with you, our world is in perilous time, full of ungodliness. Doesn't mean everybody is ungodliness, amen. But it's full of ungodliness. And when we look at Nehemiah, chapter 1 tells us something about Nehemiah. See, Nehemiah had a heart for God and for God's people. Because chapter 1 tells us how Nehemiah prayed to God for repentance for the children of Israel. He acknowledged that God, you was right to send us in captivity for 70 years because we was disobedient. We didn't follow your laws. We didn't follow your commandments, amen. Not only that, chapter 2 tells us he was the king's cupbearer and how he felt about the holy city of Jerusalem, the wall and the temple being in ruins. Because this is what the Bible tells us. He said, For wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart that I was very so afraid. And said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad? When the city, the place of my father's sculpture, lie waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Our faith should be saved. When we look at the condition of our world, but I see so many saints, so many people who say they're saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. They speak in tongue, amen. They clap their hands, amen. They dance, amen. They do all these things. But I see so many of them are not concerned about nobody else. I see so many of them got in their mind that guess what? I'm saved and I'm headed to heaven. I'm not worried about the next fellow of the next individual. But look at Jeremiah, I mean Nehemiah. Here is Nehemiah concerned about his people, concerned about the church, amen, the temple of God, concerned about the wall that protected God's people from their enemies. He's concerned about it. And here we are in 2022. Quick to quote Matthew 24 and said that these things are going to be. That is true. 
But we're going to find out. Yes, God's word said these things going to be. But God also told you and I to go. He told you and I just because we see all this stuff going on, amen, it's time for us to sit back on our moral, amen, and then start looking, amen, to go into heaven and be satisfied and say, I believe my name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. I'm not worried about the next stuff. No, that ain't what the scripture tells us, amen. The scripture tells us something totally different, amen. Let us know, amen, as the days approach, amen, as we see all these signs, amen, Point to Jesus coming, amen. You and I should be sounding the trumpet, amen. You and I, amen, should be just like John the Baptist, amen. Telling people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, amen. This is what you and I should be about, amen. But no. We say, so we okay. But it don't work like that. Amen. It don't work like that. Because God is calling you and I for this season. I told you God knows how to get our attention. But when I see the hurt of families, because loved ones have been innocently killed, loved ones have been innocently sent to prison, locked up, amen. When I see children hungry, elderly being misused and abused, see marriages being destroyed, you and I should be concerned. We should be concerned. Because see, this house, amen, these places, amen, that we have dedicated to the Lord, that we call churches, amen, that we have dedicated to the Lord, the Bible said is a house of prayer, amen. Not only that, the Bible calls it, amen, when we really look at it, amen, the Bible said it is a hospital, amen, because he said, amen, them that are whole, amen, you don't even have to be there, amen, but them that are sick, Amen. So it's a hospital, amen, for those, amen, who are sick. Amen. And guess what? We have much sickness because I'm talking about spiritual sickness, amen. We ain't talking about this physical sickness, amen. We're talking about a spiritual sickness. Hallelujah. But as I begin to look, at this passage of scripture. And I asked God, you know, what would he have us to do in this day and hour? He said, work and be prepared to fight. Because when we look at Nehemiah, Nehemiah encouraged the people to work. And he also encouraged the people to be prepared to fight. That's why that verse 16 told us, amen, he put half on the wall working. And the other half was there to fight and to defend if they had to. And this is what you and I, in this day and hour, need to be prepared. Because verse 7 and 9 let us know that there's going to be opposition. That's why I said they are trying to silence you and I. They're trying to stop us from speaking what is holiness. They start, they're trying to stop you and I from speaking that marriage is between a man and a woman. Amen. Because this is what does said the law. This is what is written. Hallelujah. This is what's written. I know what man law said, but I'm telling you what is written. I'm telling you what you're going to have to do when you stand before God himself, amen. The one, amen, is that as our brother this morning in Sunday school say, amen, who's able to destroy the soul in the body, amen. That's the one you're going to have to stand and give an answer to what you have done in this body, amen. By what is written, 
in his word. When we look, the first thing it shows us, amen, that Nehemiah had to deal with was opposition. Because verse 79, let us know that they were they were, they were trying to discourage Nehemiah and them from completing the work. Amen. They was there to try to hinder them. They was there trying to hurt them. Amen. They was trying to fight against them. And I think about you and I in this day and hour. Don't you know there are those who are trying to discourage you and I from talking about holiness. They trying to stop you and I from walking this holy life. They trying to cause all kind of hindrance. Amen to the people of God who declare that they are holy and they are going to live holy. Many are trying to hurt us. What do I mean? Amen our church on a national level. Amen. They have to set back millions and millions of dollars now just in case somebody come up with a lawsuit. Amen. So they'll be able to go to court and to try to fight what is written. Amen. You see they trying to stop us. But do you know God is still in control? Yes, he is. He's still in control. And I'm getting ready to go. Amen. I'm getting ready to go in a few minutes here. Because saints of God, and you and I have to be like Nehemiah. Amen. It's not time for us to stop working. Amen. Because God's word lets us know that you and I can only work while it's day. Because night gonna come when none of us are going to be able to work. You know what God is really telling us? That there is a season where he going to deal with us. That's why he said, amen, you got to work while it's day. You got to work while I'm dealing with people hard. Because see, there's a day and an hour that's going to come. Because these people want to continue to believe a lie. I'm going to turn them over to it. Amen. And then it ain't going to be no hope for them. See, you and I got to work while it's day. Hallelujah. Work while it's day. Hallelujah. And I heard Elder Bros last Sunday. I don't know, many of y'all may have forgot his title, but he shared, we are in a spiritual war, and it has been declared, and God has called for the saints to come on active duty. Now that's what he said, amen, last week, amen, he told us how Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Amen. How this world system is governed by Satan. How it is influenced by Satan. And we don't. Hallelujah. Sometimes act like we don't understand why things are the way they are in this day and hour. When the word of God has told us, amen, that Satan God of this work have blinded the minds of those who don't believe. Think about that. We got a world of people that Satan has blinded. Amen. And they are trying to influence the church. They're trying to influence you and I. But they have been blinded by Satan. Amen. And you and I got to understand. Satan himself and the fallen angel, they know their destiny. You know what their destiny is? Hell. 
This is why God created hell for Satan and the fallen angels. See, Satan know he cannot be saved. The fallen angels know they can't be saved. But you and I, God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to redeem us for the penalty of sin and death. So you and I can be saved. Hallelujah. But we're talking about this work. I told you, he told us we got to work while it's day. But then my Bible tell me in this day and hour when they're trying to silence us and they're trying to make you and I step down from holiness, you and I better be like Paul. Faithful. Hallelujah. It 
what we talking about this morning. And I said, Nehemiah, a man was working. But at the same time, he had half of them working and he had the other hand prepared to fight. But see, you and I, we got to be working and prepared to fight. What do I mean? Saints, Satan, in this world, hell, and is twisting the truth into lies. The world is saying everything is okay, and it's accepted by God. And just do what makes you feel good. But beloved, I say you and I got to be prepared to fight. Hallelujah. 
we are hypocrites. Hallelujah. I know y'all don't like that this morning, but I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. Because see, this is what Nehemiah had to do. He had to encourage the people to continue to work. Even when they face opposition, he had to continue to encourage them to work. He had to let them know in order for this work to be completed, we got to be prepared to fight. Because guess what? The wall around the city has to be restored because that wall protects us from our enemies. And we in the church I think about Paul many times when I preach and when God gives me the word. How God had allowed Paul to have whatever this affliction was in his body. And how he prayed to God three times. But God let him know why. Paul, I don't want you to get lifted up. You're doing all these great things, Paul. You get lifted up, Paul, and you'll be a castaway at the end. That's why Paul let him know. He prayed the prayer of God. After you to use me, don't let me be a castaway. He prayed three times for God to remove that from him. And God told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. Saints, we can no longer compromise God's word. If it says it, we have to find ourselves doing it. We have to love one another. We have to follow peace with one another. 
as much as lies within us. We have to find a way to do it. We don't realize how many people are looking at you and I because we said we are saints. We say that we are church of God in Christ. We say that we are holy. We say we are Christian. We don't realize how many people we are called into an error. And sometimes they don't even get a chance to repent and come to know God as their Lord and Savior. They'll point to the church and say, I don't want to be down there with them folks. Because they this, they that. They this and they that. And we say they had excuses. But when we really examine things, as God's word tells us to examine, many times what they are saying has some truth in it. It may not be the complete truth but it has some truth in it. Saints of God standing all over the place today. God tells us in his word, we have to be prepared to fight. We live in an hour where the enemy has taken much from us. The enemy has taken our children. Has taken our finances. Has taken and destroyed marriages. Has destroyed families. And today God is telling you and I, we have to be bold enough to go and to get that stuff back from the enemy. Don't you know we have the power on the inside of us to go get our children back? Because he tells us, after we have received the Holy Ghost, we shall receive power. We can declare on our children that are wavering. Today, God, I declare today, because you told me in your word that I could cast my cares upon you, for you cared for me. You know, God, by my children. I declare today, God, according to your word, that they will come to know you and their Lord and Savior. Because I believe Joshua said, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Ain't that child, did that child live in your house one day? He told you to train them up. Your body being afflicted with pain. We can declare, amen, by Jesus stripes, we are here. God, today, you see us, God, standing in your presence, dear God. You see, God, where we are as a church, dear God. Where we are as a body of believers here at 1020 North Ripley, dear God. You see us, God. You know where we are, God. You know the work that you have called us to do. The battle is yours, God. But God, you have called us 
to be prepared to fight God. And God, we don't fight God with our fists, God. We fight with the word of God. Oh God, we fight with the sword. This two-headed sword, God. And now, God, that we stand in your presence. God, as you allow us to cast our cares upon you, God. And now, God, that we have cast our cares upon you. God, let us leave them there, dear God. Let us have faith and trust in your word. That your word will do what you said it would do. It do no good, God, for us to call ourselves children of the creator. The creator of everything. And then don't believe what is written. You to share with us that we must, hallelujah, believe that you are who you say you are and that you are reward of them that didn't just seek you. We must take faith and trust in your word. God, we thank you today Thank you today, dear God, for being our Lord and Savior. Thank you today, dear God, for healing. Thank you today for deliverance, dear God. Thank you, God, for keeping us, dear God. Thank you for your divine purpose and your divine will being done here in Mount Island. Thank you for the body of Christ, the church. His pride. God, we love you today. We give you thanks. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I truly thank God for you today. Thank God for his word. Amen. Trust and believe. Amen. Something has been said to encourage us. It's not time for us to quit, but it's time for us to work and be prepared to fight. We got to stand on God's word. If nobody else believes the word of God in this day and hour, do you know we as saints of God has to believe it? Amen. And we have to apply it to our life, put it in action, put it in action. So I thank God for it, amen. And you heard earlier in the announcements, amen, tomorrow, we ask as many as who can, if you would come, amen, and support the homegoing service, amen, of Minister Larry Wilmington tomorrow, amen. And then that Tuesday, right here at Mount Olive, amen, we ask it, amen, that you would come, amen, and support the light of family, amen. With the home going of their dear brother, Brother Milton. And please keep these families lifted up. And there are others, amen. I know Mother Griffin, she had a loss, amen. Keep her lifted up in present in prayer, amen. Keep them lifted up in prayer. And there are others, amen, who have lost loved ones. I know Evangelist Boone just recently returned back, amen, from losing her uncle down in Georgia, amen. So let's keep one another lifted up, amen. Because the one thing we have the assurance, amen, that Jesus is going to return. Jesus is going to return, and he's going to return for a church, amen. And he's talking about that church, amen, that he died for, amen, that he shed his blood for. 
not this old church, amen, and everybody, amen, say you can do anything and everything is accepted. No, 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 no. Jesus said, amen, that church, amen, that's a holy church, amen, that church that's without blemish, that church without spot or any wrinkles or any such thing, amen, that's the church he's coming back for, amen. So we just thank God for you. So standing, amen, we want to bless the offering, amen. We thank God for our visitors, amen. We thank God for you, amen. I call you a visitor because I have never seen you, amen. I heard you say you was saved here at Mount Olive, so you're really not a visitor, amen. Amen. But for me, amen, I just thank God for you coming out today. Amen. Gracious and eternal Father, we thank you, dear God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing, dear God. And God, we ask you that you would bless everyone in here, God, to be a seed sower in your house. Your word tells us you give seed to the sower, God. So we're praying, dear God, that you will put seeds in everyone's hand, dear God that they will be a sower in your house, God. And God, now, God, that you have made us all sea sowers, God, I'm asking you, dear God, that you will bless this offering, God. Bless it, dear God, to accomplish those things that you have sent it to accomplish, dear God. You multiply it, dear God, as only you can do it, God. And dear God, we say thank you for it. Bless your people a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. When I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch, pray, live holy every day. And please, please, don't forget to work and be prepared to fight. In Jesus' name, amen.